Oh, boy, oh, boy. I didn't get my hair and makeup done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, same here. <laughs> so, I actually look better a real person. Uh, I don't know if I can say the same, but, you know, we try. So we're, we're talking with Mike Tramp. I guess we say formally of White Lion, or do we say of White Lion? Well, it's obviously a, a, an issue that, that goes on and on and on. You know, are you from, are you off, or what are you, man? You know, I would like to think that I was just my tramp, and once I played in White Lion. Right. Okay. Now, you're, you're, you're talking to me today. We, we've done this before. Today is because you've got Museum, a new album coming out in August. And uh, yeah. it's a little bit different than what folks might expect. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, listen, there are still people expecting to hear Vito Brada play on my record or, or see the White Lion logo. They're probably the same ones still thinking there's a dinosaur walking around in some kind of like forest and still alive. <laughs> you know what? It, it's probably one of the more interesting issues for you and I to talk about because yeah. I'm not going to be able to to top any Gene Simmons stories about being on the road and what happened, stuff like that. It's just a fact. <laughs> but the fact is really, and I was talking to, to um, some other journalists about it, and, you know, we as human beings and we as musicians and we as artists or songwriters, some of us actually move on. Right. We're not just, uh, I do actually have more than one pair of pants. And, you know, it's just the way it is. And as I have progressed, I mean, the band Freak of Nature, which I formed after White Line. Which is a great band. Was, was not just about starting another band, but it was also that I felt a calling. I could already hear it in my voice that I wanted to sing different and, 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 and sing, sing something, you know, that was different from, you know, from White Lion and stuff like that. And then after that, I just followed the natural calling for me. And, and as I returned to be a solo artist, I just became me. And this is where a lot of people get confused. This is my tramp. When I was in White Lion, I was my tramp in White Lion, and I, and I played that role. And if I was the leader or the songwriter or the singer, whatever, and the same thing with Freak of Nature. But once that I'm by myself, it actually becomes kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's not really a gourmet meal, but it's pretty good tasting. Yeah, it is. But Yeah, you know. But, of course, <laughs> that doesn't preclude that fans, if they go to a show, they're going to still hear the White Lion songs. Well, you know, you know, I look from, 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 from the stage out into the audience, and, you know, my audience are not 18 years old. I mean, you know, they're almost as old as I am. And then once in a while, there's some that just wandered wild into the club and thought, you know, it was Lincoln Park playing or whatever. <laughs> but they get converted at the end of the day because they do find out that what I do represent is the real deal. And I, of course, I play heritage and homage to my um, to my, my my foundation of White Lion and, and, and also Freak of Nature and stuff like that. These songs belong in the set, and, and I take a lot of time to tell the, the, the audience that my, my way of writing songs or my, my foundation of songwritings is very folk-oriented, you know, and, and, and that is sort of, of course, where I am today. But a lot of the White Lion songs came from that thing, so it's easy for me to take these songs back to... To, to, to play them that way and show people how strong the song still is, yeah. even though it doesn't have the incredible guitar work of Vito Brada or James or Greg in the song, I'm still able to play the song, and there, there really isn't, at that moment while I'm playing it, missing anything. No, there really isn't. Now, you know, the Maybe question... Maybe 20,000 people in the audience, but... <laughs> yeah, but it's a more intimate setting. I, my, my, my question who, who for... Who remembers for, that? Pardon me? Who remembers that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you need some intimacy in your music. It's that's what music was all about. But my question to artists, especially as you said, heritage acts, is why bother making new music? Fans seem to have a very short attention span. Give them a three-minute single, throw it up on iTunes or on Amazon or Google Play or wherever you throw them up these days, and then go back and play "When Children Cry" eighteen times. 
Yeah, you, and you got a great point there. And I, it's not too long ago I I, uh, I re- read that one one band was making that statement. It's the same kind of band that gets hundred thousand dollars per festival and stuff like this, and and maybe plays twenty festivals in a year, and then they go back home and they take their wigs off and then they become something else. Right. And that's fine. I happen not to be in a band like that, and I am. Um, in, in a situation where, you know, when I was younger, I walked down the street and I saw there was a painter sitting in a basement painting and I really liked the painting. So I knocked on the door and says, you know, how much for the painting? And he goes to me, he says, this is not for sale. I go, what do you mean it's not for sale? Why are you paint? Oh, I paint for me. Right. So you're you know, I, write, I don't write songs these days because I think I'm going to be on MTV or on the radio. Um... I write the songs because they come to me as I sit and play guitar. I don't sit and rehearse playing guitar. I just sit because I like the sound of it and I like the comfort. Like some people smoke a pipe. I play an acoustic guitar, you know, and have a cup of tea. And then it comes, but it's only about a couple of days ago, I woke up with a similar feeling as what you're talking about. I says, why am I recording albums and going through the process and even the process of recording an album, even on a small level, manufacturing it and putting it out still costs money before yeah. you start maybe breaking even. And then I also remembered reading in an article. I do actually read once in a while in, 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 in classic rock. And it says Great that Sebastian, Sebastian Bach had, you know, were, you know, were, were angry with, with the 70,000 Facebook fans because he didn't under, understand why 70,000 people were following, but only 3,000 or 5,000 people had bought his album. <laughs> and you know what? He actually got a point. Now, let's just say here, at this moment, I got about 12,000 fans and stuff like that. On, on following Facebook. And I and and I have serviced them pretty damn well with with, with I was going to say private videos. I says you know videos of of songs in the hotel. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that. And and giving people so and and you know I sometimes I wake up in the morning and go oh my god I better give them something and then I go wow what do I get in return maybe three hundred sold albums via Facebook so you know. You do end up with that kind of battle, and, 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 you know, if it's a tough day, you might just decide that, you know what, I ain't doing this anymore. Right. So you have to do it for the passion, Is there not always, for the return. Well, that's what I was going to say. Do you always need a return? I mean, you know, when you throw a picture up on Facebook, sometimes you get 100 likes, sometimes you get 1,000, sometimes you get two. Does it make one more valid than the other? I mean, it's still important to get out there. Yeah, you know it is. I mean, I mean, I do, I do, I use it more as information, as as for those who want to follow and you know listings of shows, news about the album, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is, is you know, but I do believe that there is a fine line that a lot of people live via Facebook, and many could be artists too. That it is the return. Holy shit, what did they say about what I just wrote and stuff like that? And then you get dragged into the fight and go, don't ask me about Vito again. I, I, every month I almost put a statement up. And there's nothing else I can do about it. You mean I can't ask you if Vito's coming back to White yes, Line? No, you, you can, and then I can answer. <laughs> and then I can hope that the, tw- uh, the 12,000 people that, that lock in to, to, to see this video clip when we, when we put it up... Actually, we'll remember and not write, is Vito coming back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it is too bad, though. It, I, I was thinking about these musicians that had these great presents in the 80s. Izzy Stradlin, uh, Alec John Such of Bon Jovi, and Vito, and they just vanished from the face of the earth. I, I, I don't understand how that happens, quite frankly. How do you go from playing Giant Stadium, at least in Bon Jovi's case, to just not existing? I'm sure that all that that if we had those three guys right now yeah. with us, they all would have a different story. Yeah. Some people the some people hold back, and I'm not going to lie to you. There is a part of me that would love to just turn around and wander into the forest and never come out again. Really? Okay, this is a daily battle that goes on, you know, because. If you if you start if you get deep into analyzing the music business, it's it's kind of like talking to Hannibal Lecter. He messes up, messes your head up. 
or you can just take it as 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 um as kids do, and you just say, well, we're just going to open another franchise, and you completely yeah. look at it that way. But in my case, and it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm any less or any more than anybody else, it's just my heart and my soul is so deep into this music that it affects me equally, you know, both ups and downs and stuff like that. You know, there's a rush, but there's also an incredible let down and an, an, a big sadness that, that I almost daily feel. Right. And sometimes I go, wow, why have just why have I put a tour together of 50 shows? I don't want to go on and tour. And then I get up on stage and then it feels good, right? And then you sit alone in the hotel room and then you think and then there's something else coming into your life and stuff like that. So, you know, it's it's yeah. Hey, and, and I'll talk about the tour in a second. Let, let's talk about the social media because you do throw stuff up on Facebook. Back in the day, you didn't have to do anything. The record company made the videos, MTV played the videos, you know, radio spun it. Now you sort of have to get out there on Twitter and Facebook and do it yourself. And that's got its minuses, its plus and minuses, right? You've got the interaction with the fans, which is great. But sometimes you've got the interaction, the interaction with the fans which is not so great. So uh, explain sort of how it is now to market the music. Yeah. And, and, and I, and, you know, I've, I've taken to, to sort of limit it to the way that, you know, people can only come and, and, you know, because I don't want to get into like, you know, a private, you know, argument between people and stuff like that, because it's really easy to get hooked in there. Yep. This is also one of the reasons why I don't Twitter. Why do I need to tell someone that I just had a glass of orange juice. Well, because it's fascinating. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, I do I do want to share stuff with him. Like, you know, then I then I, I posted something big about, you know, the uh, the the, the, sh the shooting down of, of the, the Malaysian airline plane and stuff like that. And not just specific just that, but basically how much it evolves into so many different things. Right. And then you feel, okay, do I want to go that deep? And now on a daily level, discuss worldly subjects and stuff like that. And then, then, and then you go, oh man, but I got to do something else today. And, and you, you, you know where we're going with this. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it is that, you know, you know, I've been even thinking about doing my own little, you can't call it a TV show, but you're going to call it a net show where then, you want to say something and then you, 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 you throw some feelers out there. Are there somebody, and I don't want to debate. I just want to maybe alert some people to, to a thought that they might not have and but, then just leave it at that, you know? Yeah. Where's the fine line though? Because, you know, you, you look at Ted Nugent these days, he's very controversial and they, yeah, they, they, they've been boycotting him and they're, they're canceling his shows. Where is the fine line for you between making a statement on what happened with the Malaysian Airlines to, uh-oh, now you're getting into being too political or too, you know, where, where's that fine line there? Yeah, well, that's it's the same thing. Why you 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 list no, yeah, you you um, uh, don't don't allow any comments on any YouTube clips you post because. It, it sort of spoils it all because right. it can it'll, it, it's it's a debate behind closed doors and you know anybody can sit there and be mighty might you know with it with with a you know a keyboard and 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 say a lot of stuff and and I have watched debates around the world and 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 you know I'm really up on reading a lot of books and I'm deep into to um to things like you would just mention and stuff like that if it's religious war if it's 9 11 and stuff like that and i've expressed that to to fans that it, it's something that occupies quite a big uh, part of my life about these things but at the same time i'm i'm also not silly to think that i can that i can get any further with it all that i can do is that i know where i stand right and i know what i believe Maybe once in a while, I open the door and just say a few little things. They could be in, they could be in the songs, or um, it could just be a comment. But I know that it's a lost cause. 
I can't take on the world right now. You know, no talk show on TV ever resolves anything. You know, Dr. Phil has the last word, you know, <laughs> so did Morton Downey Jr., so does Howard Stern. And, you know, I mean, it, it just, and then they bring on a guest and he gets to say three things. And then, you know, if he's against the issue, you know, it gets even less and you just get disappointed because you really want it to be, a, be, be resolved there. So, you know, I appreciate that you brought that up because it's a frustrating thing, you know. It really is. Now, the other thing that I've noticed that, that can be frustrating is, uh, you know, how music can be very regional. You, you've had success in Asia. You've had success in Europe. You've had success in North America. Why do you think some bands like Status Quo, Thunder, Gothard, are really sort of European bands, and then you look at bands like Ario Speedwagon, Journey Sticks, they're almost American bands. How, why, is it, why does that happen? Yeah, I guess that's a good point. And, and you know, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, for now you mentioned Status Quo. I mean, Status Quo came all, almost out at the same time as, as Led Zeppelin or, or, or Bad Combi, not very, very early 70s. I can't tell you if they ex existed in the late 60s or, or I'm sure, but based upon their age and, and how long they've been playing, I'm sure they stood in a rehearsal room in 1969 and stuff like that. Right. And and um, there are a lot of British bands that are just so British and so European and, and represents a certain way of not wanting to conform in those days to the American way and the American radio and stuff like that. Uh, one of my own favorite bands, Slate, you know, wrote just one hit after another and was huge in Europe and, and, and made it didn't make it in, in America until Quiet Riot did two songs from them, you know, yeah. except that I don't have the answer. I just, you know, it's just something, And but there's also American bands that never, you know, broke in Europe and never, you know, because uh, they had, had just a whole different attitude to it. And Europe is a tougher continent, you know, of... of, of um, but you had they, to do the, the, the same kind of thing, though. When you were in Denmark uh, doing, you know, Mabel and all those other bands, you had to move to New York to make it in, in the States, right? I mean... Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, my trip to New York were, were based on a lot of different things. But, but to be part of the American sound that I was seeking, I did, I, you know, and also at the same time, one of my dreams were to sing about something where I was... I mean, these days, I, I you know, I hook up with younger bands around, you know, let's say it's in, in, in you know, my home country of, of Denmark. I said, I says, you know, really try to, to, to make your lyrics speak about where you come from. Don't be singing about Sunset Boulevard. Okay, man, make it from, from where you are from. That is what makes it real. And that's what makes you special. In, in your own way, you know, don't be talking about Hollywood when you haven't been to America yet and stuff like that. It's overdone, you know, so. So if you're down in Aarhus, you shouldn't be rot talking about Hollywood. You know, there are bands that do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so, but what are you talking about then on Museum, the new album? You know, that you've got songs like Trust in Yourself, New World Coming, Down South, Better Freedom, Commitment. There seems to be a positive message going on. What are you trying to say lyrically? On yeah, well, a little, a little bit more. I mean, I made the stand when I, when I wrote, you know, wrote and recorded my first solo album, and I remember meeting you in, in, in uh, Montreal, Toronto, Montreal. Yes, you know, we talked about it the other day, um, two thousand and one or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that when you heard the word "I," it would rep represent me, right? good or bad. When I was in White Lion, I was singing to the masses. And in many cases, I wasn't representing myself. It was at that moment, something that, that went along with the music right. and, 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 and here and there, there are the special songs that there are, that are, are a little different. And so once I took that on, it, it became sort of like my view of the world, how I felt, et cetera, et cetera. As I got I hate to use the word, as I got older and, and, and deeper into my solo career, it became, it became my own escape from my own pain and suffering, even if it was just emotional, even if it was my family life or whatever it was, it was simply just about that. And I, it's just what I chose, that that's what I want to represent. And I'm, I'm always it's so thrilled 
um, when I when I meet people that have lived through my songs and I, some of those songs have helped them in, in that way and so on. So because, you know, you are free to take my song and make I you in that case and stuff like that, you know, so that's what about. And so especially since we talked about Cobblestone Street last year and things yeah. like that, um, that album obviously became really the complete return to my my tramps background and foundation of Copenhagen Denmark and how I had grown up and how I've been raised on those kind of songs and even though I didn't know it they had attached themselves to me and right. and 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 bit by bit it, it it came out in me and I always was wondering why is it that I always start with the same kind of foundation to any song regardless if it was Vito and I sitting there or later on and then I just one day realize that well that's because where you come from and the way you grew up and that's what you are and that's who you are so with museum I did not want to copy um, cobblestone street I wanted to make the natural progression I wanted to make the sound a little bit bigger at the same time I also wanted to explore my love for for, for different songs um, growing up and, and, and my, my fa favorite time of music is the 70s and especially the film a lot of a lot of the English bands that I grew up with let's just take you know Queen or, or Elton John or stuff like that they had these massive albums and the reason why there was so massive was the variety of songs you know, I'm a huge, gigantic ACDC Van Halen fan. But, you know, on the 25th album, you know, it is what it is. Right. It's the same, it's the same album. It's it's the same, ex exactly. And stuff like that. And as a songwriter, my variety is much big, bigger. So I went with a little bit of a different approach to it. Some of the songs came from, from, from you know, the classic background of how I write songs. And for example, a song like Down South or a song like Slave, which are, are sort of a little bit more rocker or, or guitar oriented, were songs that I simply just had had the guitar riff from, from, a, from a bit early on, the rock and roll circus, where I've been sitting and doing some electric riffs. So I, I, I said to my, my, my partner and, and co-producer, Soren Anderson, I says, you know what, can you just give me like a drum loop behind that riff? And then as that had settled itself, I wrote the song out from what I'd heard. And now I started writing the melody and the bridge and the chorus where usually I will sit and play the guitar and sing the song and do everything right there. Right. So I used a couple of different approaches. And then it just came that, that as we were sitting there listening to the different worlds, it, like, it, you know, it, we came into, it's like, you know, a room with a lot of different doors and every door you, you, you open, there was something different. You know, I just came over and said, this is sort of like a museum, you know, in a simple way. Um, instead of trying to come up with some sort of clever way of explaining, maybe that is a clever way, explaining <laughs> why is this song, the Germans asked this question, why is this not like a, why are you done that? It's a, I haven't done anything, it just happened. <laughs> it sort of explains it in the way that, you know, my songwriting covers a lot of different, you know, um, styles but still within one style. It is. Now, you've also got sort of a family theme to this. You, you've got a song called Mother on it, and you have Dylan, your son, who worked on the video, on yeah, yeah. Trust in Yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously the, the time had come. And, you know, I, I, I read an interview, no, I read a review where somebody had pointed out how already from Freak of Nature I had been talking about, you know, my family or, 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 or my mom in that case, or and in a song called Have You Ever from my first old album, giving thanks to her. And so nothing special than other people can do by themselves and things like that. But but for some reason something that that a lot of fans took to and, and felt yeah. that that was special. And I know already now that from those who have heard Mother I know that a lot of people will take this song very personal for themselves. Yes. And, and, and you could even take it because I've also mentioned sometimes, sometimes people get my lyrics wrong because I also want to be allowed to use it as a metaphor and not just say, well, it's just what it is. It all, mother could obviously is the foundation and, and, and the giver and the creator of everything. So, you know, you are free. Little Fighter does not always have to be about, you know, the Rainbow Warrior that got sunk down by New Zealand. A lot of people taking it on 
as their own struggle in life and that they will find hope in that song. Right. And I love hearing that. And that they will fight on. Um, also, the, now your tours, the last tour through the States, it was basically just you in a car driving from show to show and setting up with a the guitar. There was no band. Uh, tell me a little about that experience. And is that something you're going to continue doing? Yeah, and, and obviously last this year, I was just sort of repeating and, and extending right. what I'd done the year before. And do I mean, I mean, you know, for example, when I play in, in Denmark, it allows me to play with sort of a band, you know, or I have two other guys with me because I don't really want to make my sound as what I'm doing right now the feeling of a band it's sort of a little bit of an experiment with that i've chosen to be my own little world there right. but yes excuse me i do i do miss at times some sound on stage that's beside that but this is adapting and 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 you know improvising you know to the to the situation of how the music business is right. And I found out that this actually was, was something that, that fitted my character, my discipline, and my way of life very much. Yeah. I'm a person, you know, that, that rises early. I'm a person that likes to see the world. I'm a person that likes to, to hit the sack as soon as I'm done with the show. I don't like, like nightlife. I don't like to party and stuff like that. And I love to see the world or I love to see America, you know, Northern, and really get into small towns. And this tour allows me that because I'm never playing the big cities, you know. So yeah, as my son was joining me on the last tour, and we drove by the big cities, and says, oh, I told my son, I said, "Oh, that's the big city, but that's not what we're playing. We're playing the little cities. We're reaching people out there, and there's a certain charm about it." Obviously, I played every big city in America twice with White Lion. Yep. And I have been sitting in a big luxurious tour bus, probably watching Godfather or something like that, not looking out the window. I love America. And I, you know, it, it, it to me, it always represents happiness to me, complete freedom, even, even though I'm born in a country of complete freedom. That to me is the final frontier that still has something left that I still treasure and and, and 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 cherish so much you know of, of, of a bit of the outdoor there's still people living the old-fashioned way you know an axe and some fire with a you know a loaded gun by the bed and 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 that's just the way it is and that to me is 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 something that i admire so being able to travel around and, and go through these little cities and stop and finding the small stores is 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 to me the return yeah. I know how it's going to be in stage and I'll give myself there, you know, but, but that extra thing that I get along the road now is, 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 um, is, is living life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really charming experience. And, and you've been sort of all over the place. I know you've lived in Australia. You've obviously lived in Denmark. I think you lived in Indonesia. Um, why this sense of adventure? Why not just sort of move to somewhere in Los Angeles and stay there and be in the music business. And you know what? I, and I did say it last year to the fans uh, as I was writing on Facebook and stuff like that. You know, I deeply regret um, leaving the USA um, after 20 years. And, 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 and that mode, and that time, you know, moving to Australia. Um, yeah, Australia was great and stuff like that. I, you know, I moved there uh with my, uh, with my ex-wife and, and, and my son and, 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 we're going to do a new star. This was at the end of the nineties. This was, there was a lot of confusion going on. And, you know, I didn't know where I was musically at the same time, you know, there was nobody that I trusted. Everybody had let me wrong of the people that had given commission of my income and stuff like that. And then we ended up there and, and, and me giving up my, my, you know, my, my residency and, and, you know, my right to call America, my home. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you just don't take enough time to think before you, uh, you, you know, you sell that old hot rod in the garage and you regret it down the road. And, and now it's a little bit, bit, bit by every, and then with time, I sort of started, you know, doing more and more back in Denmark and, and the last uh, five albums have been recorded here. And right. I find, um, I find that a perfect working place with the people that I work with. Um, but 
my my past two American tours have been the highlight okay. of my musical career. It's as it's as simple as that. You know, now I'm on my third European tour, and they have been equally as great. You know. Um, and I'm looking very much forward to start this European tour next month and stuff like that. You know, we're looking forward to getting you in know, Canada, quite frankly. Know now that that I will be returning to the U.S. in 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 March of 2015, which will be the museum tour, and uh, very hopefully to uh, including Canada. Yeah, you know, I, I know enough promoters. I think I'll have to make a few calls. Yeah, we no, we I, need I, another show. I actually got some offers already last time. It was Good. just already, there was just, too, it, the routing already just, that we, you know, it's, it's part of it and stuff like that, you know. Is, of is, um, is Museum the last statement or are you going to keep making music? Oh, <laughs> no, no, it, no, it cannot be the last statement and not at all and stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah. this is pretty tough. I mean, was was it to be the last? Then I would say, wow, what a way to go out. Okay. That, it is a great way to go out. And, um, boy, I, you know, I just lost my question. I, I lost my question. Isn't yeah, that well, unbelievable? Because I said something was pretty dramatic. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you threw me off. But, you know, always a pleasure speaking with you. And I, I really do look forward to getting you out to Canada and, and seeing another show. And, and I'll even travel to go see you in Boston or New York or something because there, there's a certain um, honesty in what you do. Yeah, and, I appreciate that, Mitch. And, you know, I think that the fans also need to realize these things. What you see right now and what we have right now will pretty soon be gone. There are, there are many bands, younger bands, that's making music um, and, and, and continuing this thing. But yeah. it will not take the place of the world that we were part of. No, absolutely not. And, and, and that's just the way it is. I have chosen and I will spend a little bit more time on stage and in interviews kind of beating this gently into people's head that I have chosen to be a little bit of a hybrid, something from the past mixed with something from the even further past with where I am today. Yep. That I do represent the decade that I came became famous from. Right. But at the same time, I'm living in the current world. Yeah. And, 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 and that, and I'm not, and I, it's, this is not just a, a show of the old days. So I'm mixing these different things. And, and that's, that's a place where I'm going to be. I am the one from the eighties who moved on. Yeah. And you know, that's been always been very admirable because when, uh, grunge hit, you went with freak of nature. You didn't say, well, let me hold on to wait and tell me and let me. And then when that moved on, you moved on to the, I mean, you've always been moving. There's always been something new coming forward. It's not just been, hey, I did this song in 1986. Let me play it for you 10 times and let's call that a show. And, and that's very admirable. Well, you know, there are actually artists. It's not, it's not just Peter Gabriel and, and you know, Sting or, or uh, Roger Waters or, or, or Trent Reznor or something like that. I mean, they're actually also somebody from our decade that, that would be able to, Leave the spandex pants, even though I never wore them. They just look like them. <laughs> and just say, you know what? That hairstyle is a bit tacky now. Okay? Yeah. And that's fine. And you know what? I admire just as many of the ones that still keep that look. And that's fine. That's just not from my tramp because that's not who I am. So I want to follow where the music is going to me. Hey, I'm not going to say if I had been part of ACDC that I would have You said, oh, you know, I'm going to do something new. We're going to do a ballad on the next album. I love that album, A Band to Death. And I, yeah. I, I admire that they're a band that can be so true to a style that has never changed. But it's not my tramp. No. And, and you know, there, there's, there is that school of thought where you do what your sound is, like ACDC, or you do what you're doing and you evolve with the times it's those bands in between that sort of seem to be chasing the flavor of the month and just yeah, never sure. seem to be catching sure. it did you go eh, you know what go back you know, to the roots or exactly. and at the same time a lot of us don't have and you know luxury might be be a word to be de debated but you know kiss has just been able to just 
you know, the image, they're just moving on and it just represents something that has never gone away. Yep. And then, you know, once in a while they, they write some new songs that people don't care about and stuff like that. And then you do so. You can't do that with White Lion, especially not when the band is not together. Right. <laughs> And, 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 and at the same time, there's just not enough in that to just keep doing it over and over, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's so unique from the few gigantic bands that have that. Yep. But the rest of us end up playing on a boat and, you know, you know and, and entertaining, you know, people around the world. And I've just chosen to do it with an acoustic guitar and, and, and let the music change a bit but still play the same songs yeah so so let's end on this of course let's remind folks that museum is coming out in august and uh quickly what is then your greatest memory of your time in white line either a show a fan a person a, that you hit number one somewhere what was your the best time you yeah, see i mean you know i would be able to give you so many better answers this one i cannot come up with a great answer the first one on the top of your head yeah, going you know going on going on stage you know would kiss at the first show and and knowing that at that moment we had arrived at a different plateau right because after that we now started seeing everything in a different way and day by day slowly the band fell apart because the chase was greater than the catch. Right, like Kierkegaard said, right? It was, a, it was the Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard that always said the uh, get, no, the, uh, the anticipation is greater than the get or something like that. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or or David, Lark, David Ross says it in this way, life is like a kung fu movie. It doesn't matter if you win or lose as long as you look good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Yeah, that, that's also what Billy Crystal on uh, Saturday Night Live used to say. Um, wh where was that first White Lion show, by the way, with Kiss? Was it was in Jackson, Mississippi on, on November 13, 1987. There you go. See, so that's the memorable it's moment. It's engraved on a, on, on a back of a watch. Oh, it was really? Given, yeah, it was given to me that day. Pleasure. And I, and I saw that tour. Um, where was I? That was at the Forum, I think I saw it. The uh, Hot in the Shade tour, was it? No, this was this was the um, crazy crazy nights. It was not. Let's just put it this way: it was not Kiss's greatest tour. <laughs> but they're still entertaining, and White Line was entertaining, and this new album is entertaining. Michael, always a pleasure. Thank you very much, and thanks to everybody out there for the support. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just.